Welcome again. Liberating Faith Sunday School Amy students. Uh, disciples come to believe in today is April 9th. Um, it says uh, Easter here, uh, which is kind of surprising. Uh, this uh, saints, uh, there is no such thing in the biblical record as Easter. Now, Easter is mentioned, obviously, in the book of Acts, but it has nothing to do with the Passover, uh, what, which is what is today is. So I, uh, before I even begin here, uh, I want to correct that. That's, that's just bad doctrine. There's no such thing as Easter in the biblical narrative. It's Passover. And since uh, this door was opened, I'm going to go ahead and just speak shortly with you instead of going through here. Uh, we know the story of the resurrection. I want to just spend today uh, dealing with this notion of Easter because I, I so thank uh, the Kojic Sunday School Publishers as well as the Sunday School Publishing Board, which is Baptist, which and the David C. Cook Internet Standard International, because they all refer to today uh, as the uh, as Passover, which is what it is. Uh, AME uh, Sunday School students, uh, there is no such thing as Easter. Uh, that is not a sanctioned. Uh, Jewish holiday, which all of our celebrations uh, as believers should uh, be biblically necessarily based. But Easter, Easter, it, it, it has occult origins. And I want you uh, to research it yourself. Don't believe what I'm telling you. Uh, some will tell you that Easter is just another word for Passover. No, it's not. The Bible says no lie is of the truth. Uh, what fellowship has light with darkness, right? Um, and that's just like mixing um, the, 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 the Santa Claus, uh, with the birth of Jesus. No lie, saints, is of the truth. So when we come, when we talk about this, disciples come to believe in the resurrection, AME Sunday school students, that is not Easter. These Easter bunnies, Easter dresses, all the dresses and suits and all this nonsense, uh, has nothing to do with biblical scripture at all. Yes, the word is there, Easter, but it has nothing to do with Passover. Passover originated in Egypt. And I'm going to take my time to build this case for you today because I just have about 12 minutes with you. Uh, Passover originated uh, in Egypt the night of the death of the firstborn. Remember all the plagues which came on Egypt. God was free. God freed his people from Egypt, but this final plague uh, had to come on Egypt. So the children of Israel, Moses and Aaron led them out, had to come on Aaron, uh, had to. Uh, this final plague of death of the firstborn of all the animals and all the Egyptians firstborn before Pharaoh would let God's people go. And in order for death to pass over even the, Is the Israelites, now God certainly uh, know who they were and he could have passed through, but what God was and passed over them, recognized them and passed over. But you have to remember this is that God was building a nation at that time with a, maybe a million, two million people, we don't know, but he was building a nation. And this was, a, this was one of the initial acts of obedience and establishing the law, which would later be fulfilled by Jesus, which is you're going to strike your, your door and your, po your door post, just imagine standing outside your door and God saying, just, you know, uh, uh, sacrifice a lamb and put the blood around door post. You and your people, you and your house are safe because again, innocent blood, or untainted, sinless blood is a, or the life in the blood is a sweet smell and savor to God. And I'm going to lean a bit more into that and I'll get back to that. But you also apparently, uh, AME students, you need to understand the significance of blood. Uh, and I'm going to start with this and we'll get back to what I was saying. When we talk about blood, when we talk about it being on the lentils and the doorposts, uh, the Bible said, uh, the Bible says that the sacrifice is a sweet smell and savor to God. God, it is not that burnt flesh or anything like that is great. What it is, is life pleads and speaks to God. And the book of Leviticus tells us that there's life in the blood. That's what it says. The life of the creature is in the blood. That's what it said. So now we know why God sacrificed. And we know that blood, life is in the blood because back in the book of Genesis, remember this, the exchange between God and Cain when God killed, uh, when Cain killed his brother Abel. God said, where's your brother? And Cain said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And God said, what is it you have done? The voice of your brother's blood cries to me from the ground. So it's the life, according to Leviticus, that's in the blood. And that life, according to when we look at the Genesis narrative, speaks and pleads to God for what? For forgiveness of sin. Right. So or for vengeance or uh, whatever that whatever that conversation is. 
but we know that there's life in the blood. I just built the case. So they struck their doorposts and lentils in Egypt the, the night they came or the time they came out because that life on the door was pleading to God. It was speaking to God. Don't know what it said, but it's like, this is it. Don't come here. This is okay. This is a protected. This is a safe zone, but it was act of obedience. So when we lean into that, we know that in the desert, uh, when they got out in the desert, they, uh, later on, they would establish a mobile temple, which we call a tabernacle. That further, and that would later, when the Jewish people were grounded in, in the, in the nation of Israel, they, that would later become Solomon's, the, the first temple that Solomon built. The tabernacle turned into the temple, and that same sort of sacrificial system was in the temple. When we fast forward in the time of Jesus, a second temple had been built. Solomon's temple had been destroyed. A second, uh, Israel went into captivity. When that thing was destroyed, it went to captivity, came back out. A second temple was built in Jerusalem, and that was the temple that Jesus was preaching at. Right. I need to do this AME student state because y'all need to hear this because they wrote Easter in this and that's not OK. That's not OK. When in time of Jesus, that second temple had been built and it was operational. The sacrifices obviously had resumed after the destruction of the first temple. And that was the temple. Remember, Jesus, this conversation, Jesus and Jesus disciples, they were looking at the temple. And they said, man, this is this is cool. Jesus said, you see all this. There shall not be one stone left here that will not be thrown down. 30, about 737 years after the death and resurrection of Jesus, the Romans dissembled the temple brick by brick. If you look at a picture of the city of Jerusalem, you'll see a gold Muslim dome of the rock sitting where the tent Jewish temple used to sit. Prophetically, a third temple is going to be rebuilt. Three is prophetic. Uh, so finally, Jesus, when we talk about the prophetic, the Paul taught us that the law was a schoolmaster. What that made up that taught us what sin is basically. And when we think about that, the law was fulfilled with Jesus Christ. Remember, lambs were slaughtered in the temple. Their blood uh, was a, the life in their blood. Uh, innocent blood was a sweet smell and savor to God. Uh, and Jesus, as the lamb of God, came as a once in all sacrifice for sin. So no longer God said the time would come uh, to one of the prophets uh, that that he would not delight in the blood of bullocks and rams. And that was the time uh, when his son came and Jesus died on the cross the, in his blood. The lamb of God, we know he's a lamb of God because the book of Revelations explains that to us. He was sacrificed on the cross and his blood pleaded to God for us or advocated uh, for reconciliation and, and grace to God for us. Jesus' blood on that cross pleaded to God in a way his own mouth in the flesh never could. So what I'm saying today, saints, is we have to understand the just the hermeneutical and, and the, the biblical historical background of things that we do. And one of those things is God didn't give you or I, I'm, I'm a church leader, I'm a pastor. He didn't give me permission theologically to teach anybody that there is Easter. And I'm not, uh, I just, and I, I want to be fair here with this as I, as I close today. AME students, now you know that this is the Passover Sunday uh, and not Easter. I just recently even started, I mentioned this to our church over the years, but I just necessarily last uh, start teaching about this myself. All right. I never I haven't called it Easter. I just I, I I haven't in a long time, but it was time for me to share that with God's people. So I'm sharing it to you in love uh, is that you understand that there is no right way to do the wrong thing and no wrong way to do the right thing. Light and darkness can't dwell in the same place. And I know a lot of times over the years we've been taught certain things, but but those things turned out not to be just so. But every generation is going to increase in knowledge. And those ministers younger than me, this, I'm 51, that, that, that are my son, you know, you're not my son's age. They're going to bring something else that, my, that we didn't even see that's doctrinally sound to the scripture. So don't misunderstand what I'm doing here. I'm not one of them dudes that say, oh, we need to get away from religious tradition. We need to, uh-uh, I'm churchy. I, I, I told one of my dear brother street preachers, I said, man, I'm churchy. And he was surprised by that, you know, kind of radical. But I'm churchy, man. I love who we are. I, I'm never, unless the Lord, unless I have a Gideon level experience, I'm never ever going to get away from who we are again. There's, there, there's nothing out there because God made us who we are and what we are. And I love who we are and where we came from and where we're headed. So I say that to point out, saints, is that 
Study to show yourself approved. A work person that needeth not being ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But don't forget today to share the Lord Jesus with somebody. To share the, the week of the Passover, this the time of the Passover with somebody. And you don't have to quote scripture. You can just testify about the goodness of the Lord. Plant the seed and God will water it. Don't forget what he did for you and what he did for me. Amen. Welcome again, saints. It is your dearest servant, brother, Pastor Brian Dale. I am asking you right now to go to the description section of this video and click the link for sermondownload.net. We want you to take the next step. We buy, you buy devotionals, you buy Bible studies, you buy books uh, from religious leaders, all of these things. We want you to go straight to the source, into the mind of God which are pastoral sermon notes. That's where these things originate at. So you can see straight into the process and how God deals with us as we deliver our word. These are good for Sunday morning preaching. All you can do is just print and preach. They're ready to go. You can pull them up on any device, smartphone, all the way up to your tablet devices. You can also use them as Bible study content as well. Further, if you lean into that a bit further, we have a 104 sermon package where you can download 104 sermons and saints you could turn this into books devotionals our notes are thorough they're doctrinal they're theological we want you to go to sermondownload.net by clicking in the link the description section of this video so be it